Ah, hello everybody. Welcome to the game room. A couple of questions. Who here is one, a male? Two, attracted to the opposite sex? Three is between the ages of, I don't know, 30 to 35 years old. And finally, four, who had Tomb Raider when it came out? If you've answered me to all of these questions, well then, you probably know where I'm going with this. For everyone else, let me scar you a little bit as I put you into the sweaty palm, spotty swat of a teenager's mind back in the mid 90s who had just read about the Lara Croft nude cheat in whatever British gaming magazine they had at the time. Haha, <laughs> picturing me in another light now, are you? Oh, get over yourself, of course I bloody tried it. In fact, I tried it a hell of a lot. In fact, it was because of this awesomely brilliant prank cheat that I ended up knowing the song Wannabe by the Spice Girls off by heart. Yeah, I'll tell you what I want, what I really, really want. So tell me what you want, what you really, really want. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna really, really, really wanna zig a zig. Uh, if you wanna be my... What am I doing? Well, there was quite a few rumours on exactly how to get the new cheat to work, but the one I read was to make Lara Croft sidestep to the tune of the recently released single Wannabe by the Spice Girls. Sadly for my hot-blooded teenage nude raider obsessive self, the cheat was a lie. Anyway, that's enough about that. The Nude Raider scandal has been covered by everyone on the tubes. What I wanted to talk to you about today was yet another time that the UK gaming press completely mugs me off several years earlier. It was here in this very news agent in November 1994 that I picked up my copy of the 11th official Sega magazine as I did every month. Now what normally happened is that I would run to the cheat section to see what crazy modifications I could do to whatever game I recently purchased with my car washing lawn mowing pocket money. But this time, there was something different. Once you get past the 32x previews, the Woolworths advertisements, an amazing Earthworm Gym competition where you could actually win an original animation cell from the first episode of the cartoon by answering the question, What's the name of that bump in the middle of a worm? You know, it's sexy bits. Bloody hell, this is essentially a kids magazine, Sega. <laughs> what is it out of curiosity? Well, it's called a clitella and is basically an earthworm's sexual organ. No wonder I didn't understand it back then. When you've looked in your ancient biology textbook to find the answer, put it on a postcard. The answer, not a worm's sexy bits, and send it in to If You Cut Worms In Two, Only One Half Survives Competition, Sega Magazine, Priory Court, 3032 Farrington Lane, London, EC1R 3AU. Bloody hell! Well, over the next couple of pages, past this awesome Sonic and Knuckles advert, it turns out that the official Sega magazine was feeling pretty giving that month, as it was offering one lucky reader a million pounds if they can find Rankles the Otter. Yes, we're offering an amazing one million pounds to the first person that can send us a photograph of Rankles, the hidden character in Sonic and Knuckles. Rankles, a green otter with outsized sparkly ankles and Knuckles' sidekick, is hidden somewhere in the cart, and he could be your ticket to Easy Street. And if that's not enough, the runner-up prize was pretty awesome too. If you're not quite up to this challenge, we've got a slightly easier contest for you. The first reader to photograph or accurately describe the ending to Sonic and Knuckles when played in conjunction with Sonic 3 will walk away with a brand spanking new Multi Mega. Can't say fairer than that, can you? Just send your photo or accurate description to us here at He's Completed Sonic and Knuckles and Many a Mickle Makes a Muckles Competition Sega Magazine. And the first proven response gets the Multi Mega. Now let me tell you something about me during this time. I was bloody Sonic and Knuckles obsessed. To this very day I think it's not only the best Sonic game of all time, but it's actually the very best game of all time. And instead of reading the rest of the article I went crazy looking for this mysteriously warped green Knuckles looking character with no knuckles and spiked bowling balls on his feet. Night after night I looked, but I could never find him. Perhaps I should have read the rest of the competition. Anyone who sees Rankles should call Alcoholics Anonymous because Tom guys just made him up and we're afraid that we couldn't give you the million pounds anyway. <sighs> 
a lot of time wasted. So, that's the end of that. Or was it? <laughs> you see, unlike the Nude Raider scandal, someone actually found the awfully made up character a few months later. And here is some footage I ripped off YouTube showing someone actually replaying the instructions found a couple of months later on how to find him. Again, they explained how the competition was fake and that Rankles the Otter was a made up character by Tom Guise, but did go into detail on how you can find this character yourself. And here he is. Unfortunately, Peter Whitey and Daniel Leonard didn't get the million dollars as the article didn't believe that this was actually Rankles. Sadly, we have to tell you that they can't have the one million pounds because as you can see from our pictures, the mystery character hasn't got sparkly ankles and therefore cannot be Rankles and is actually just Knuckles underwater. And sadly, that was the last we ever heard of Rankles. Who knows how long Pete and Daniel spent on finding this weird debugged Knuckles glitch. Although I am sure it was a hell of a lot longer than it took Tom to actually design the bloody thing. Here's hoping for some quality Sonic Mania DLC. Rankles, your time to rise is now. Hey, 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 guys, thank you all so, so much for checking out the video. Uh, I really wanted to do this one for an incredibly long time. Uh, I've looked through so many magazines trying to find rankles, and when I finally found that scan, I'm like, yes, now I can finally do it. But uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this this crazily weird uh, video that was uh, a big part of my youth. I've always remembered this. I always remembered this. Anyway, uh, yes, please do go and check out Death Mountaineers and Dreamcast Guy, the people that lent their voice for this video. Both incredible channels. Obviously, that's why I featured them. And if you're a fan of my work, then I'm sure you're going to like their stuff too. And now it's the part of the video where I give my usual shout outs to all of my Patreons with a special shout out going to Phil Lowlin, Ian A. Chapman, Pop Goes Rock Band, Gavin Guravecci, Creamy Elephant, James Loveridge, Casey Garner, Blitz, Hedgy, Ben Hall, Taylor Armand, Sin Killer J, Takikawa, and Tiago Piera dos Santos Silva. If you want to be part of the Patreon list, get your name shouted out, get your name shown, come and see what I'm working on, be part of the Discord channel where you can share your creations and see what other stuff I'm working on before it goes live, as well as being part of the new competition where you get to choose my next Let's Play and commentary, then click the link that you see on the screen. Don't forget to subscribe, give it a thumbs up, thumbs down, put it on social media, especially Reddit, those people doing that are bloody awesome, thank you so, so much. But for now, this is DJ Slope signing out, and hopefully, I'll see you all next time.